members of the party were ashamed of some of the actions of the party leadership. The party acclaimed itself the largest political party in Africa with a projection to rule the country for at least 60 years. This self-acclaimed description came at a time many citizens groaned under the party's style of leadership. Insecurity reared its head and many citizens were caught in the melee. The economy did not fare better. Victor Giwa, a lawyer and human rights activist, gave reasons behind PDP's fall. Prior to the 2015 election, there was a lot, there were what they called the new PDP, you know, and that came out after the convention that led to the election. So a lot of party persons believe that uh, as at 2015, that office of the president was zoned to the north. To many citizens, the party failed to live up to their high expectations of establishing a stable, secure, and prosperous country. A lot of factors uh, led to PDP not making it in the 2015 uh, elections. We had issues of insecurity. Um, another factor was that of corruption. But then, PDP's failure to achieve self-sufficiency in power, energy, and steel for economic development made its economic gains as weak as quicksand. Luwole Oke is a serving member of the House of Representatives on the platform of the PDP. PDP got it wrong that even with all the achievements, with all the good things that we did, that the current government cannot even match. We still, you know, the power got into our head. Why would you allow five governors to leave your party one day? From the Olympian heights it had reached, the PDP fell to the habits of helplessness after many of its founding fathers and other big wigs parted ways with it. Death of President Umaru Yerodua and the copious violation of zoning and rotation arrangements which led to former President Gulag Jonathan running for office twice against a gentleman's agreement was the final nail in the coffin. And the newly registered All Progressives Congress became the bride of those disgruntled with the then ruling party. And for the first time in the history of Nigeria's politics, a ruling government was roundly defeated in what was generally acclaimed a free and fair election in 2015. It's been seven years in opposition and many believe the party has failed them more as an opposition party. Hope rose for the PDP with the emergence of a new leadership led by former president of the Senate, Iyo Chahayu. Determined to stage a comeback, the party has moved to appease the North as it jettisoned the zoning arrangement for its presidential race. In this modern day Nigeria, we are talking about zoning. I think we should talk about issues. We should talk about competence. We should talk about capacity. We should talk about somebody who has energy. Not a few citizens believe the party threw its doors open to accommodate the frontline contender of the presidential seat and former vice president Atiku Abubakar in the race. The former vice president is believed to be the formidable element that can face anyone presented by the APC. What hope lies ahead for the party in the 2023 elections? If care is not taken, PDP will return to its chief opposition party in 2020. That's the way the permutation seems now. Because you see, for you, the party is even finding difficult to rebrand. Whether or not they are going to take over from the APC is going to be a function of so many variables. One, what are their policies? Two, who are their, who is the, their candidate? Three, what is their internal political arrangement? The government of the day is also behaving like PDP. I hope they won't get it right. I hope they will not choose the right person for presidential candidate so that we can sweep them out of office. 
the 2023 general election beckons, the direction to which the electorate will go will certainly be determined by the level of acceptance of the candidates put forward by the political parties. PDP will do itself a lot of good if it learns from its mistakes and puts its house in order. Jokia Adisa, TVC News, Abuja.